how and what our theme for the year would be. And, um, you know, we, we know that much of what's happening in our church, in our world, in our own lives can easily be defined by the deficits. We are always inundated with all kinds of messages that are accentuating the negative. Um, we're often finding ourselves, if we be honest, constantly uh, hypersensitive to the places where uh, there may be a lack of something. Lack of relationship, lack of love, lack of justice, lack of hope, um, and uh, we, we thought that uh, it would be great to begin our year uh, with a declaration uh, that is actually about what we hope to bring, what we hope uh, to proclaim, and that is the light of God. Um, what would it look like if as we uh, were acutely aware of all the deficits that are around us, that we would not allow ourselves to be defined by those deficits, but that we could actually imagine that the greatest thing the people of God have to bring is the light of the love of God that manifests itself in so many different ways. And I find and I believe, hopefully our preaching and teaching series uh, will actually give you and I some concrete ways where we can indeed light up the world, uh, light up our own lives, light up those places in our lives where there may be uh, some deficits, where there may be some negatives that in the lighting up of the world, however we define our world, whether it's radically local, whether it is just so without bounds that even at times we find ourselves caught up in the, 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 the magnanimity of it, that we can still imagine that the God we serve gives us the light we need uh, to bring out the best, not only in ourselves, but in one another. So we're going to spend the next few weeks, there I say most, talking a little bit about what does it mean to light up the world, light it up uh, in 2016, and how can we be agents of this light in the name of the Lord. Uh, so we're going to start today in Luke chapter number 11 uh, with this thought, with this idea. Uh, we're going to receive uh, Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, communion, uh, following this sermon as one of the first expressions, I hope, of what it means as a people to uh, unite together around this common idea and belief that we are people of the light. And uh, I want you to imagine uh, yourself as more than the uh, uh, individuality you may report, more than the worst thing that's ever happened to you, more than uh, the craziness that's going on in the world. But I want you to imagine that we at all times are always an instrument of the divine God who has given us all we need to light up some stuff. Amen? Now, if you turn with me to the book of Luke, you'll find uh, this passage of scripture uh, to be nestled, to be couched in a larger uh, narrative that has been written by uh, a, a, a physician. His name was Luke. Many people uh, take it to be true that his name is and was Luke. Uh, he was someone who, uh, in many respects, was writing uh, one of the final of the three, what is called synoptic gospels, to a largely Greek audience, an audience who was not very familiar with the intricacies of Jesus' message, but were curious about Jesus. He was writing in an environment that was not looking for a Messiah, per se, uh, but found themselves convinced by the words and actions of this man named Jesus. We find so many things in this book of Luke that I think are so relevant for us today. It is a book that uh, really seeks to uh, give us all kinds of uh, frames that I think will be very helpful uh, for all of the, the kinds of conversations that we hope to have today. Uh, Luke was uh, someone who focused on the universality of the gospel, meaning that uh, many of the writers in uh, the gospel narratives were all focusing on a particular group. Matthew was thought to have been writing his gospel with the Jewish population in mind. 
uh, Mark was thought to have uh, been writing his gospel to an audience that was defined, overdefined by Roman culture. John was writing his gospel to a group of folk who were very much kind of overdefined by what is called Gnosticism, or this idea that there's this duality between good and evil, between flesh and the eternal. But Luke was trying to sum up all of the best ideas and present a compelling story and narrative that showed that everybody is welcome to benefit from this gospel. Luke was someone who made every effort to, to make sure that women were uh, centrally involved and included in his gospels. Lepers uh, were central to his gospel. The poor were central to his gospel. All those religious uh, outcasts, people who couldn't make it into the Holy of Holies, Luke said, I'm going to make sure that I tell your story because I think there may be some people uh, who may need to know that the gospel ain't just for those who got it all together. Amen. Amen. The gospel ain't just for the Jews. It's not just for uh, the, the high priest. But the gospel is for everyone. This is the message of, of what we find in Luke. And then you also see inside Luke this idea uh, where Luke shows a very powerful contrast between all the many ways that following Jesus must be relevant. He talks about uh, the, 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 the balance between a spiritual life and the physical life. Luke really accentuates uh, feasting and fasting. So Luke, you have the most recorded feast in there, but you also find Luke talking about fasting all the time. You find Luke really showing that in order to follow Jesus, you have to be comfortable living in the tension. That following Jesus ain't going to just like whisk all your problems away. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. I know that's how the gospel has been marketed to many of us. Amen. That if you just give Jesus your heart, he'll just take everything and just make it all right today. I mean, at the very least, tomorrow. Amen. Just give him 24 hours. But how many of you by experience know that, you know, it takes a little, little, bit, little bit of time for all the loose ends in our lives to be resolved? Amen? Amen. But how many of you also can be a testimony, testify that uh, while those loose ends are being resolved, God is with you all the way through? Everybody testify that as well. So in this way, uh, we find Jesus really uh, presented in, a, I think, a super powerful way that is very resonant, hopefully, with us today. Luke chapter number 11, verse 33. Uh, it, it should be on the screen, or you can uh, take a look at it in uh, your Bibles. But Luke chapter number 11, verse 33. I'll be reading from the message translation. I think that'll be up there as well. Yep, it says this. No one lights a lamp, then hides it in a drawer. It's put on a lampstand so those entering the room have light to see where they're going. Your eye is a lamp lighting up your whole body. If you live wide-eyed in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is a dank cell. Keep your eyes open, your lamp burning, so you don't get musty and murky. Keep your life as well lighted as your best lighted room. The word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So again, lighting up is what we're going to talk about. And it's so important to, again, appreciate the uh, anthropo anthropomorphic frame of what the writer is talking about because in Jewish culture many people did not have as much of an advanced physics uh, class or course of physics yet uh, so many uh, folks assumed that the way we could see was often because light was actually uh, emitting from their eyes it allowed folks to be able to see not because the sun was coming into your eye and refracting from the inside and then allowing you to see what folks thought that the light was actually emanating from within. This is kind of how, how they understood 
the, the, the kinds of, 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 of explanations and ways to explain not only how they saw, but then they tried to use those same explanations in the teaching of these divine and eternal principles. What I love about this uh, particular passage is that there are three ways that light is kind of used in this passage that I think will be helpful for us. There are three Greek words uh, that will uh, try to build uh, the totality of our sermon around. Uh, one is phos or phos, which is uh, the Greek word that is actually used to just describe light. Uh, the, 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 the actual uh, uh, light itself. One is called uh, let's see, uh, haptos, which is actually uh, the, the, the word that expresses the, the actual instrument that is being used to uh, hold the light. All right? And then you have the final word, which is lupnia, which is that which is being used to amplify the light. So you have light, that which is emanating, the, the thing that actually drives the, the, the darkness uh, away. You have the, the, the haptos, that which is holding the light. And then you have uh, the, the lupnia, that which is amplifying the light. And I want to I submit to you today that for all of the light that we are called to bring into the world, there is an opportunity for you and I to do some self-evaluation to make sure that all of these parts of the light are functional in our lives. Because the reality of the matter is that around us 24-7, there is indeed some mechanisms at work to either extinguish our light, to diminish our light, or to make sure that our light does not have any impact at all. Did you catch that? There is an effort to diminish your light, to extinguish your light, or to make sure your light has very little impact at all. And some of that, I believe, is, is a, 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 a daily project of the enemy of our soul. Saint Beelzebub, Lucifer. I don't know the other names that we may use for, 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 for this force, this evil that is organized to, to push against the light of God in the world. And if you are attempting to reflect that light, then you have just signed up to be on the opposite side of this force that is attempting to push against the light of God. You don't have to like, you know, sign a contract and be like, I am against the devil in order for you to have these forces pushing against your life. You just have to be on the right side, on the God side, and you automatically get a little bit of extra focus. Hello, somebody. And then there's also, I believe, this, this, this part of the fallen nature of the world where fear and human weakness conspire to create the kind of, of catalysts that are seeking to diminish, extinguish, or limit the impact of this life. And I can't think of any other kinds of expressions of this than just what we've seen over the last 24, 48 hours where we continue to see the, the, the spiraling nature of fear and, and, and exclusion and, 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 and all kinds of isms that, that see some misguided individuals up in Oregon camping out in a federal building with assault weapons, daring the federal government to come and try to expel them. And it's so fascinating because uh, I think the brother took his YouTube uh, 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 video down, but this 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 guy he was he was like it was his last testimony, and I don't know how many of you saw that late last night, but he was giving you know this like final message to his family, and and he was in tears, and he he was just talking about how this this country is 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 under attack. And, and he'd rather die a free man and he was invoking the name of God and the name of, 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 of tyranny and on and on and on and I 
I sat there and I watched that and I said, wow. Human weakness, darkness, the forces of evil are constantly waging assault against the minds and the hearts of individuals and people. And we as the church, we that would name the name of Jesus have not even found ourselves totally immune from that. Because if the truth be told, it's the wrong person get on your nerves. You may not leave a YouTube video, but you show them I know that, 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 that sounds very rudimentary, 
to some folks. Oh, of course, Pastor Mike, but you know, how many folks are trying to bring light with no lamp? Look at your own life. How many of us are trying to follow the ways of Jesus, but we don't have Jesus? Oh, gee, he was a great prophet. He was a nice guy. That's not enough. There's a lot of nice folk out here. Hello, somebody. A lot of folk who are of exemplary character. A lot of folk who did a lot of good in history. A lot of folk who will live long after they are they're dead and in the grave. Their name will reverberate through history. But that ain't enough to carry the light. You have to have something that you can allow to be lit up. And I want to submit to you, my brothers and sisters, that a lot of us are trying to bring light, trying to have light, but we don't have Jesus. And I'm not talking about the American Western Michelangelo bad perm Jesus. I'm not talking about that Jesus. I'm not talking about the Jesus of our imagination, the domesticated Jesus. I'm not talking about the Jesus that if he was alive today would be no threat to anything or anyone. You know, the Jesus that just loved everybody. If you just loved everybody, why did they kill Jesus? You don't get killed by the state for loving everybody. You don't, you don't have your life uh, 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 totally twisted and turned around just for loving everybody. Ain't it something how we sanitize folk and take the radicality out of their lives? Why? So it does not make any claims on our lives. Well, I'm just trying to love everybody. Well, good luck with that loving everybody. Because there are some folk that Jesus loved, they didn't like his love. They didn't like his truth telling. They didn't like his, his unadulterated commitment to the margins. They didn't like that Jesus was actually a rock in everybody's shoe. He was even a rock in his disciples' shoe. They followed Jesus as long as he had them fishes and the loaves, boy. As long as he was walking on water. As long as he was healing the sick and raising the dead. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm carrying his light. But when Jesus wanted to go through Samaria, Samaria, Jesus, I'll see you on the other side. When Jesus had to go to the cross, you know, they kill the folk over there, Jesus, in Jerusalem. <laughs> we just left there, man. We just escaped the stone and left. I want, to, I want to suggest that 2016 for many of us has to move beyond admiration of Jesus. This voyeuristic kind of obsession with Jesus. Oh, you just look at him and your heart just melts and, 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 and your knees get weak and, and, and you're just googly-eyed. Oh, I just love to look at Jesus. 2016 needs to be a year where the church has devotion to Jesus. Because devotion is the thing that will allow you to have something to hold the flame, to carry the light. I don't know how many of you have ever tried to, you know, blow out some candles or you, you try to, you know, get your, your cake together and, and you have a candle, but the wick is just not even, it's not even there. Like, you, you use it so, like in my house, we had six kids and every time a candle was done, because all of us were born pretty much back to back to back, so we, I think, blew out, you know, uh, the four birth, the, the four for our fourth birthday at least three times, the same candle. <laughs> <laughs> I put in a candle and you light it, so TJ, you know, his thing just, whoo, it just lights up and he blows it out and everybody cheers. Then my mom and dad would take the candle and put it in a drawer. <laughs> my turn. The candle come back out. It took a little Put it in a drawer. <laughs> By the time Bill was, was, was getting ready to get his birthday, hey man, he was digging in the candle and trying to get what little string was left. <laughs> the problem wasn't with the candle, it was the wick inside. Right. Hello, somebody. That's what our life is when we don't have devotion to Jesus. We 
have a lamp or a candle with no wick. So you light that thing and what happens? Ooh, Jesus. When you try to light a candle with no wick, what happens to the candle? It melts. So what you think about your life now? When the fire comes in your life and you don't have nothing for the fire to capture, you start to melt. You know what melting looks like for some of us? Cussing folk out. Knocking folk outside the head. Othering people. Talking about, you know, why is they fault and you can't take no personal responsibility. Well, you don't have no wick. Tell your neighbor, you better get a wick. You better get a wick. <laughs> you gotta have a lamp, my brothers and sisters. Something that the fire can capture. So that's the first question many of us have to answer in 2016. What is your lamp like? It's, it's, it's so important for us just not to be so obsessed with our external conditions. That we forget that there's an internal work that has to be done just as well. God is trying to position some of us to make sure we got something to capture the fire or you will be consumed. By the fire. Pat yourself on the chest and say, I need to get my lamp in Get my lamp in order. Get your lamp in order. The second thing that I think this text is lifting up for us today is this idea that when you get the lamp and you light the lamp and the lamp catches fire, you got to have something to amplify or elevate your light. Now the scripture says that when you light a lamp, you don't you put it on a lamp stand. Why? Because you got two choices. You can hide your light or you can make your light higher for more people to see. Hide versus high. Hide. You gotta ask yourself, where am I hiding my light. Isn't it interesting that when Jesus lives and walks among the people that his light is not determined by his surroundings, his crowd. Jesus seems to be relatively consistent as we understand him in scripture to just be shining the light. Everyone who ran into Jesus had their dark places lightened up. And you can tell because of the way they left Jesus. The only folks that seem to leave Jesus with a little, you know, grinding up their teeth or wind in their jaws were the folk who didn't think Jesus had anything to offer them. Anybody ever met folk like that before? They think they are the greatest gift to creation. There is never a lesson they can learn from anybody else. They always got to keep it 100. I just got to keep it real. Got to keep it 100. When you ain't nothing but a 99 and a half on your best day. Hello, somebody. Jesus walks in from the lepers to the prostitutes to the religious leaders to even the soldiers. Think about that. Lepers, those may be folks today, HIV AIDS. Physical ailment that has such stigma that you're not really trying to disclose that to folk. Prostitutes, folks who find themselves caught up in such cycles of poverty and exploitation and abandonment that they are doing whatever they can to make their ends meet because the systems of the world have failed them. Soldiers, that'd be like the popos, the police of the day, right? 
religious leaders, that be the bishops and all them folk, you know, who just super, like, you know, sanctified. And Jesus can interact with all of them consistently without diminishing who he is. Isn't it interesting in our world today, you following Jesus, people will often try to make you feel like you can't shine with the light of Jesus. You can shine with every other light. You can shine with your patriotic light. You can shine with your racial and ethnic light. You can shine with your sports team light. You can shine with your favorite whatever. But when it comes to Jesus, I want you to put it in a drawer. But my brothers and sisters, I want to suggest to you today that you need to interrogate how are you able to not put this light that has been gifted to you through this gift of salvation in a drawer. If Jesus is the source of that light, and Jesus is able to interact in every single environment, and folk are leaving that encounter with Jesus lightened up, and I want to suggest, if you are leaving encounters with folk and they are consistently feeling worse than they were when they first met you, <laughs> your light is in a drawer. I don't care if you talk about Jesus when you see him. Oh, my brother, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you and Jesus wants to save you and Jesus wants to heal you and Jesus wants to deliver you and oh Jesus, he, he wants to take your sin, sin soul and, and pull you out of that, that dark place and oh he wants to make sure that you, my brother and sister, ain't gonna burn in no hellfire and lose your eternal damnation. Uh, oh, and, and, and if that's, and, 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 and maybe that's just really the way you talk. saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all day and have your light in a drawer. What would it look like for you to rep Jesus and not even have to say Jesus' name? Amen. Have other folks just say Jesus' name for you. Like, man, you kind of you act like Jesus. One said Moses, one said Elijah, Peter said, you are the Christ. What did Jesus say? Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Amen. but it was God. Yes, yes, yes. When your light is shining, yes. you don't have to always be trying to define who you are yes. shining for. Because God can reveal it through the life that you live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of folks talk about Jesus today. I wear my clergy collar and all that stuff, me and my brother, when we do our justice stuff, because we just want folk to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we out here representing Jesus. Mm -hmm. But there are other folks out there representing Jesus too in their clergy collar. And a lot of our movement friends be like, hmm, there's something different about y'all with them. Now, I don't tell them that because I try to let everybody know that we all on the same team, even though some folk are on the bench. <laughs> oh, thank you, they can't never get in the game. They still on the team, though. I'm not hating on them, they still on the team. But you know, when you get in the game and you start airballing and fumbling the ball and, and throwing interceptions, you still on the team. They don't necessarily take your jersey. <laughs> Hallelujah, right? Game recognize game, folk. <laughs> and I believe that inside the heart of every created being is a uniquely carved 
burned out place that only God can fill. And when we let our light high, not hide it, but let it shine and elevate and amplify, that unique part of people's hearts and lives start to be penetrated and filled by that unique light that only God can provide. That's why I want you and I to be people that are lighting up our lives, one another's lives. How does this look individually, my brothers and sisters? Well, I think it's important to continue to appreciate it in your families, in your relationships, in your careers. You have to have a vision that structures your light. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit next week, but I'll just give you this quick definition of what I believe vision is. Vision is insight. It's foresight. <laughs> Thank God for my wife. She, she, she heard this at least a million times. Even when I don't say it right, she knows what to say. Vision is foresight with insight based on hindsight. Vision. Foresight. The ability to look forward with insight. The ability to see beyond what everybody else sees based on hindsight. The ability to see and learn from what has happened previously. When you have vision, people can follow that light. Our vision comes from God. And when you rightly communicate God's vision of the way your family should be, your relationship should be, our neighborhoods, our country, people will follow that vision. How can we as a church, you as a follower of Jesus, shine that kind of light in the world? And then finally, we'll say, what is the light that is emitted? Can you keep this light lit? So if there are some folk who are trying to extinguish your light, keep it from even lighting up because you don't have nothing to light up, or diminish your light trying to hide it, how many know there's some folks who are trying to limit the impact of your light as well? How do you make sure, how do we make sure that our light stays lit? There are practices that we as Followers of Jesus must engage in regularly for our light to stay lit. Your light does not stay lit just because you want it to be lit. It does not, it does not sustain itself without you practicing some practices that help your light to have maximum impact. <coughs> We're going into a consecration. I talked about this earlier. That's one great practice to keep you lit up with this light. Because how many know what you feed the most inside you will have the most power over you? So if you feed that part of you that is not keeping and sustaining the light inside of you, then of course that part of you is going to burn out. And you will be overwhelmed by that part of you that you're feeding continuously. What must you do? What practices? Prayer. Great practice. The study of God's word. Great practice. Instead of gossiping and, and arguing and fussing and fighting, find you at least as many friends who can Help sustain your love for God and the things of God. Amen. As you have who help you keep loving and liking those things that are diminishing and extinguishing your life. I'm not telling you to drop off all your bad friends. I'm just telling you you shouldn't have no <laughs> friends <laughs> that outnumber the light givers in your life. Amen. If you need to get a prayer through, you 
shouldn't be trying to like, oh my goodness. Let's see here. No. 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 Oh. Well, I have one number <coughs> out of a hundred contacts, <coughs> and that's your grandma. <laughs> that's not a good look. So here every week, at least 150 of us gather, there's some good folk in here that you could possibly get in a relationship with. Over this next month, you should probably exchange some phone numbers with some folk. So when you need to have some good, as the scriptures say, fellowship, you're not searching, looking for love in all the wrong places. Nigga, no love. That's Eddie Murphy. Fuck me. Saturday Night Live. 1981. <laughs> Make sure that you have catalysts that can keep your light emitting, burning, <coughs> showing, lighting up the way. This is what I believe we're called to do and be in 2016. We're called to light up the way. You can't light up the way if you don't have nothing to catch the light. You can't light up the way if you don't have nothing to elevate and amplify your light. You can't light up the way if your light keeps burning out. So what must we do? What must you do in every part of your life to create the wick, create the stand, to create the practices that allow you to light up the way? I don't know about you, but I want to be a carrier of God's light. I don't want to be someone who can put the light down when I get ready. But I want the light to be so much a part of me that it is inseparable. That whether I want the light to shine or not, that light is just shining. The moment I step into an environment, that room, that environment changes because of the light of God. That is in me. That is in you. It is a unique light. I'm not saying it is the only source of light in the world. There's many sources of light out there in the stars, right? You look up and you see all kinds of light. I mean, as much as the eye can see, but you see the sun, and you see the moon, and that light ain't never going nowhere. That's how I want our light to be. While you're standing next to the believer or the unbeliever, the atheist or the Muslim, the, 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 the Republican or the Democrat, the, the, the Berkeleyan or the Oaklander. Maybe the Berserkleys or the... Can your light shine? This is, this is, this is I believe, our task. Just light up the way. Light up the world. Light up your life with the light of the gospel of Jesus. Stand with me, everyone.